Praise the Lord. Thank y'all for being here this morning. God bless y'all. It's another beautiful day. We got sunshine. It ain't raining. Uh, I think spring's officially here. And uh, here it is last Sunday in May. So uh, we're blessed this morning. Appreciate y'all being here. Appreciate everybody being here. God bless again. Uh, big announcement. Uh, we're doing Sunday singing start next week. Woo. Looking forward to that. David Andrews will be here. And uh, looking forward to that. Miss Sunday night scene. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, anybody got any prayer requests this morning? Spoken prayer requests. Yes, right. Remember um, Sherry and Kenneth, Kevin's daughter. Um, yeah, yeah. She's having a baby this morning. Remember, uh, remember my friend Jamie. Uh, ask God's blessings on them. Uh, got requests this week. Uh, someone possibly might be having a bad health report, and she was asking for prayers for someone in her family there. So just remember that prayer. Um, remember a nation. Things are kind of odd. Ask God to help in the kind of chaos going on right now. Um, bless our town, our state, our county. Bless all the leaders. They all need Jesus. Ask God to help. Um, anybody else this morning? Any spoken prayer requests? Anybody else? Any unspoken requests this morning? Praise the Lord. Come pray with us if you will. Pray with us there. Come to all if you'd like. Let's go to the Lord and pray this morning. Ask God's blessings on these things. Father Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you this morning, Lord, we ask, Lord God, for blessings, we ask, Lord God, for healing, we ask your salvation and mercy and grace, Lord, we ask your Lord to renew our spirits, Lord Jesus, we ask your Lord God to help us to be more like you, we ask your Lord to bless this congregation, bless this church, bless this nation, Lord, help us, God, to be more like you, help us, Lord Jesus, to look to you for all things, God, help we give you praise this morning, we worship you, and we thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day and a beautiful place to come worship you. Lord God, you deserve it all praise, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. By thy grace, we love you, Lord, and we worship you. And again, bless this day in thy name. Amen. Praise God. Riley, are you singing? Hey, Riley, are you going to sing this morning? Yeah. Okay. Come on down. Good to see the little ones up here singing. Thankful for that. That's a blessing. Thank for all he does. Always look forward to seeing little fellas up here. That's a blessing. Remember to now hold that mic still, buddy. You ready? Yeah. I once were lost in sin. But Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about our trouble. Hear our failures cry, and He will answer by and 
Times my flat seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud about me hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way.
job. Good job, good job. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sister Honey will sing this morning. What a blessing. That's a blessing. What's Sister Honey singing this morning? It's 276. 276. While we are living in this world of care, many the burdens that we have to bear. But there's a prayer bell at the Lord's right hand. Give it a ring and he will understand. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring. Bearing our message unto Jesus the King. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on for God will answer your prayer. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring, bearing our message unto Jesus the King. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on for God will answer your prayer. Three Hebrew children in the flames were her thrown. Because a mortal king they would not own. Jesus delivered and the king then saw. Prayer bells of heaven beat a man made law. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring. Bearing our message unto Jesus the king. When you are burdened down with troubles and cares, ring on and on for God will answer your prayers. When Paul and Silas both were thrown in jail, they did not worry who would go their bail. But on the prayer bells they began to ring, off fell the stocks and they began to sing. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring, bearing our message unto Jesus the King. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on for God will answer your prayer. Into the garden Jesus went to pray. Until her sweeping came as blood they say, bringing the bells there in agony, bringing salvation that we might be free. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring, bearing our message unto Jesus the King. When you are burdened with troubles and cares, Ring on and on for God will answer your prayer. Good job, baby. Thank you, love. Praise the Lord. Prayer bell in the heaven. That's always something that we can ring on and depend on and, and know that he will always be there. Thank you for that song. Thank you for this time. Thank you for his many blessings. We are blessed to be in his house this morning. Praise the Lord. Anybody else before we go on to the sermon? Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Any testimony or anybody else? Praise God. I personally want to thank each and every other one of you for being here. Appreciate folks watching as well. And Getting a little response on that, so I'm thankful for that. People watching the videos and all, so that's a blessing. And uh, it's just, uh, it's good to know that the Lord is with us. And it's good to know that He is in control. You know, Amen. we got this situation, you got the virus situation, you got all the riots going on, you got the crazy politics, and you got just life in general, and it's easy to 
it's easy to get washed around, it's easy to get knocked around, but if we'll remember that God's in control, if we'll just put our faith in Him and lean not on our own ways and our own words, then we're going to make it through this life. Praise the Lord. Uh, I do want to preach at you this morning a little bit. Uh, thinking about the light, bringing up the sermon here, I had it on my notes here. I got people thinking he's up there playing Nintendo or something. That is not the case. I can tell you, I promise you. But the, the light, I know I ministered a little bit on the light recently, but I just, I got to thinking about things. I got to thinking, we're going to be in uh, Psalms 119, 105. We're going to be in Psalms, Proverbs, and John this morning. But I wanted to look at that verse in Psalms this morning. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, this morning what I'd like for you to think about, I'd like for you all to think about the things in this life that you do. The things in this life that you participate in. The things in this life you listen to. The things in this life you watch. The things in this life that you participate in. And I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Is the light of the Lord involved in these things? The Bible tells us here, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Am I dwelling in things that aren't of God? Am I dwelling in things that aren't pleasing to the Lord? And if so, I must ask myself, and I would ask, I would ask you to ask, your, you would ask yourself that, why am I dwelling in things that are not of God. We got a lot of options in this world. A lot of things in this life, hobbies, activities, pleasures, uh, things that we want to pursue. God wants us to have life and life more abundantly. God wants us to prosper. God wants us to have good things. But God also wants us to draw nigh unto Him. God wants us to have Him with us at all times. And, and I've talked about this before. If I'm in a place, if, if John, I say to myself, if Jesus was here in the tangible, he's always with us. But if you think about, if Jesus was standing right here with me, would I be acting and saying and doing the things that I'm acting and saying and doing? And if you put that to the case, you'd be like, hopefully we could all say yes. I would hope. But there are times in my life, and I'm sure there's times in your life, like, well, I'm not sure, or I just know he wouldn't be at. So we have to go back to the Word. If we look in Proverbs 3, the third, the third chapter of Proverbs, we look 5 through 8, very familiar text. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now, what is it saying? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your being, we are to trust in God. If you and I would trust in the Lord, our, our anxieties would fade. Our worries would fade. These things that come into our mind, the, the, the fear and the mistrust and the doubt and the discouragement and the things that rage against our spirit, these things would fade if you and I would put our total trust in the Lord, it'd be a whole lot like Peter out there in that boat. Lord, the waves are rocking, the seas are heavy, the winds are, it's crazy out there. But if you bid me to come out of this boat, I will. We trust him in the Lord. We need to trust in the Lord. It says in the sixth verse, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It didn't say and some of the things you do in this life, let him know about it. It says in all thy ways, acknowledge him. That means when I get up, 
That means when I get home, that means at work, that means uh, at church, my friends, my family, my get-togethers, all these things that consume my life, I've got to acknowledge the Lord. If I acknowledge the Lord, Eric, he's going to tell me where to go. He's going to help me through this life. There are things in this life I don't understand. There's things in this world I don't have a handle on. But I know the great I am does. I know if I lean on Jesus, Lord, I need you to help me in this situation. And when you ask the Lord to show up in your situation, he's going to shine that light. That light's going to be a light. You know, if I'm standing here in the dark, if I'm in the dark in this, this music stand right here, if that thing's in my way, if there's darkness, I'm going to roll right over this thing. I'm going to trip this thing up. I'm going to trip me up. Somebody's going to get banged up, banged around, make a mess, make a noise. That's because there's no light. But if I've got light, boys told me downstairs you can see in the light, if you can see, then I know to either walk around or move this thing, it's no longer in my way. And I can go about my business. The Lord will shine a light in your life. He may be like, you need to get this thing out of your way. This is something you need to go around. This is something you can do without. This is something you need to fix. You need to sort out. I'm so happy my oldest brother we've been having communication uh, situations for decades and I told him I'd call him this week I would call him at a certain time and it was a minute past that certain time and he called me. And I know how little that might sound, but this guy don't call people. It brought joy to my heart. And I'm like, thank God. This is good news. There's progress. Communication has improved. I'm thankful, Lord. You know that's what the Lord wants from us? Lord, I promise I'll pray. Lord, I promise I'll read the Bible. Lord, I promise I'll take time for you. And when you connect on that, Lord, I did pray. Lord, I read your word. Lord, I draw nigh unto you. Lord, I call out unto you. Lord, I need you in my life. You know that that, that just shines a light in your world. That's the Lord coming saying, hey, I'm glad to spend time with you. I want to suck with you. I want to teach you. I want to prosper you. I want you to be in peace of mind. I want you to have no worries in this life. He's telling us all throughout the scripture not to worry. He's telling us that. When you worry, you're basically telling God he can't do it or he ain't enough. I'm guilty of worrying myself. I'm not pointing fingers. But every time I worry about stuff, John, I know for a fact my trust in God in that situation is, is waning. And i got to go back to the Lord. Lord, help me here. He wants to help us. We're flawed, folks. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know the word ignorant is not a bad word? We've used that so harshly. Ignorant means you just don't know. Lights went downstairs. I didn't know how to fix it. I was ignorant. I asked Josh. Josh went downstairs to fix the light about 10, 15 minutes ago. I was ignorant on how to fix that light. That means you just don't know. You know, God knows that there's a lot of things that we don't know. And that's why we need to call on him. That's why he wants to be that light unto our path. That's why he wants to love us and direct us and guide us. It tells us in Proverbs, it says, Proverbs 3, 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart 
from evil. Did you hear that? It's telling me not to be wise in my own eyes. It's like, oh, I've been here and done that. I've said that myself. That's a very familiar phrase. Been there and done that. You know, the Lord's saying, listen, you don't know this thing may be different than it was the last time. It might be different than it used to be. I had a beautiful experience with some eggs recently. <laughs> now, I'll tell you all about me cooking eggs. Now, what I do, some of y'all will be like, well, ain't no reason to eat big. I like to take four eggs in a plate, and I'll stab the yolks and get them all mixy scrabble in the plate. Make sure this is a microwavable plate. This ain't a paper plate. Make sure you've got some good microwavable plate here. Okay? Scramble your egg. Take you a piece of cheese. Put it right in the middle of that plate. Now, I personally, honey buys the pepperoni, little slices of pepperoni. Sometimes I'll put the pepperoni slices in there. But this works just as good with just the egg and the cheese. You don't need butter. I love butter, but you don't need butter to do this. Salt and pepper to flavor. I'll throw that at you. Put that bad boy in the microwave for about two and a half minutes. Pull that bad boy out. You got your big old plate of fluffy. Fluffy eggs. Take you a spatula. Cut that thing right in the center. You've got two half moons. And if you got tortillas like we do at our house most of the time, that fit halfway through a tortilla, you flip it over, you got you a sandwich right there. You got two of them. You got one half moon, boom, boom, there it is. My dear brother was witnessing this a week or so back, and I was telling him, this hey dude, it always turns out to this. I split that cheese open. Eric, you know what happened? It was running. James, this is the first time this has ever happened to me. I don't know why this is running. Every time I've done this, it's come out flat and good and cooked. For some reason, this time it was running. Be not wise. In your own eyes. Be not wise. Sometimes that happens. I told James, I said, that must have just been a big old yoke right underneath that piece of cheese that just didn't cook. That's the only explanation I had. But be not wise because even though you've been down this road a time or two, something may be different. It's like going down these mountain roads, these curvy roads after a bad rain. Well, I've been down this road a hundred times in my life. Wait a minute, there's a tree in the road. Wait a minute, there's limbs in the road. My dear brother was driving off 18 one time. There was a lady that had a shopping cart. Walking in the road. In the dark. It was in the twilight. I told James, I said, brother, look out. He's like, wow. I mean, she was like, if this is the white line right here, she's like right here. <laughs> walking against gravity with a shopping cart. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So you never know. You never know. When something will pop up. And that's why God is saying, don't be wise in your own understanding. Lean on the Lord. Because sometimes these things change. My dear bride, there's times, there are times we will go to the Mexican restaurant. And then there are times we won't go to the Mexican restaurant. Same woman, same relationship, same get together. She or me or both change minds. This happens. That's why you need to lean on the Lord. The Lord is never changing. The verse says, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to the bones. Health to the navel and marrow to the bones. I read something about a month ago that was fascinating to me. I'm yet to do this. But they were listing things like olive oil and honey 
and mineral water. And they were, Riley, I need you to come back in, please. Thank you, Riley. They were listing all these things, these different things. And John, they were talking about how you need to put them in your belly button. Mm -hmm. Because they would absorb through your belly button, into your body. And it would help your belly, it would help your intestines, it go through all these things. I'm looking through the scripture and I found that thing about the navel and the marriage of the bones. And I'm thinking, I don't know who wrote that article, but they must have been reading Proverbs that day. Yeah. Had to be. Yeah. It said it shall be health to thy navel. You have to understand that's your guts. You have to understand the context at the time. Back in the Old Testament, the gut was the center of emotion. It was the center of well-being. If your navel is good, then all is good. And that's what God's telling us this morning. If you lean on him, it's going to be health to the body. It'll be health to the bones. Praise God this morning. I want us to look to John this morning. John 3, the third chapter of John. Very familiar scripture. The whole thing's been very familiar scripture. I love familiar scriptures. It's kind of like saying I love you again. You hear it and like, oh, I like that. Just tell me again. Tell me you love me. Thank you, love. Loving it. John 3, 16, we'll start the 16th verse. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I praise Jesus this morning for my salvation and I praise him for my everlasting life. It's my hope that everybody in here is saved, and it's my hope that everybody watches this video saved. If not, today is the day of salvation. Call on him. Draw nigh unto him. Ask him to forgive you. He will. Ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. He will. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Are you believing this morning? I'm a believer. I hope you're believing this morning. It says, if you believe on him, you're not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned. You say, Tim, you look at the world, you look at the news, you, you listen to the radio, you, you, look at the thing, you look at the movies, you look at the shows. There's a whole lot of people out there that ain't believing on God. You can just see it. You can see it. You talk about chaos. Think about the grocery store when this coronavirus first hit. Oh my gosh. They still a little crazy, but it was real crazy then. Why? Because their faith's not in the Lord. I'm not saying if you got faith, you can ignore what's going on. That ain't what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is we have that knowledge. We have that trust. We have that understanding. God's in control. We're going to be all right. It goes on and it says, because he hath not, why is, it says, but he that believeth is not condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I'm telling you this morning, if you're looking at the dark, if you're looking at evil, if you're looking at the things that are not of God, and if you're dwelling in that, you need to back up a little bit. You need to just stay away from that. Because what your eyes see and what your mind thinks on is going to feed your body, your soul, your conscience. Think about what you're spending your time with. It says, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Listen to me. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That means sharply criticized. You ever been sharply criticized? Boy, I've been sharply criticized. Oh, my gosh. Woo! My mama, that wonderful woman, Josh, she used to make these things called fried apple pie. And I'm going to tell you something. I did not get skinny off eating fried apple pie. 
Them things had a lot of sugar. Them things had a lot of flavor. They had a lot of, lot of apple. They fried, had butter on them. Everything that's good and make you thick was in this thing. Mama made a mess of them one day, Charlene. Made a big old stack of them. She put them over there to cool. She's like, now don't mess with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know where the store's going. <laughs> Mom went in the back, do some other cleaning, or got busy doing other things. Might have been sitting there doing her crochet. I don't know, but I know where she wasn't at. She wasn't near the fried out box. <laughs> I did one of these numbers. You know those magicians? They'll do their hands like this, and they'll make something disappear. Yeah, buddy. Woo! Mama's in the outer room. And I want me some fried apple pie. <laughs> the time is now. <laughs> and I went to go on one of them, Charlie. And you know every kid thinks they're smarter than their mom. Everybody, ain't no matter. <laughs> if y'all never thought that, y'all lying to them. Because I know everybody has that thought. I thought I was smarter than mama. <laughs> Boy, I had my face full of that. Face full of that apple pie. Face full of that goodness. Boy, guess who showed up there? Woo! <laughs> I was about to be sharply criticized. <laughs> I.e. reproved. Uh, Why are you eating those fried apple pies? I told you to leave them alone. <laughs> I knew things went south in a hurry for me. I knew better, but I didn't care because I wanted it. And see, that's what happens in this walk with God. We be saved. We know the word. We come to church. Boy, I'd rather, like, just this one day, I want to do that instead. Mm -hmm. And what that is might not be pleasing to God. In fact, if I think about it long enough, I know it's not pleasing to God, but I want to do that. <laughs> That's the balance. You see? Sometimes we pass the test. Sometimes we don't. We're flawed. I'm not trying to say it's okay to sin. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is, is God knows. That's why he gives us this information. Seek God. Trust God. Go to the light. Rebuke darkness. Avoid darkness. Stay away from those things that are evil. The more we do that, the less likely we are to mess up, to trip up. It goes on. The last verse I'm going to read this morning, John 3, 21, it says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. The works, basically it's saying the works are the work, God, of, the work of God coming through us, you see. Again, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds might be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Praise the Lord. You see, I can stand over here. The closer I stand to this light right here, that's going to change my face. You're going to extra see how little hair I got. My face is going to look a little different. I'm near the light. When I back away from the light, things change a little bit. It's not as clear. It's not as crisp. It's not as, it don't define it as, as, as tightly or as exact. You can see things better in the light. And that's why God is constantly telling you and I to go to the light. To be in the light. To seek the light. That's why God wants us to be. He's telling us to avoid evil. To avoid darkness. To avoid those things that are not pleasing Him. I've seen many a miserable Christian. And there's been times I've been the miserable Christian. I'd rather dwell in something that's not pleasing to Him. And I can feel that tug. I can feel that spirit saying, you need to come back. 
You need to get that out of your life. I'll give you this one more example and then we'll say a prayer. It's a whole lot like a mop. You get a mop, first time you do a mop, that thing's white. Got these nice white strings on them, bright white. You mop long enough, them white stripes, they get brown, they get gummy looking, they get gray. There's going to be hair in that mop. There's going to be trash in that mop. There's going to be nasties in that mop. You got to take that mop head. You got to clean that thing out. You know our walk with God's a lot like that. I got saved, praise God, born again, washed in the blood, all my sins gone away. Thank you, Jesus. And then we walk in this world. And then we walk in this life. And then we walk in this life. And we walk in the darkness. And we walk in between. And we go up the hill, down the hill, through the valleys. We're going to pick up dirt. We're going to pick up nasties. God wants us to come home. God wants us to clean that stuff out of our heart, out of our life, out of our mind, out of our mouth, out of all that we are. And if you and I would go to the Lord, this will happen. Praise God. I want the light of the world to shine and to be with each and every one of you. Because that is so important in this life. I need each and every one of y'all to seek the light. Seek God. If you need help from me, I'll help you. If you need me to help you, I will. I'll be glad to help you. I'll be glad to be there for you. We'll say a prayer. We'll come together. We'll seek the word. I want you to know I'm always here for you. Trying to be here for you. And I feel like you guys are here for me. Let's say a prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we love and we thank you. We honor you. We worship you this morning. We praise you, Lord. Ask you, Lord God, if there be anybody here this morning that needs salvation, Lord. Let this be the day. And Lord, if there be anybody here, Lord, need prayer, need a healing, need something to touch for you, Lord. We'll pray as well. If so, Lord, let them come. Lord Jesus. Lord God, it's my prayer right now, Lord, that everybody can sound my voice, Lord, and there's folks watching this later, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to touch their life. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to let that light shine in their life, shine in their world. Lord, let them to see their heart, Lord, just like that mop. If there's any nasties there, if there's any dirties there, if there's anything that needs to be cleaned out, Lord, help us all to draw close to you. Help us all, Lord God. Purge our heart, Lord. Help us, Lord God, be more like you. Lord, we love you this morning. We love you this day. Help us to be more like you again. In thy sweet heavenly name. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank you all again for being here again next Sunday. Sunday night, we'll have singing. David Andrews will be here. Six o'clock, come back again. We'll have regular service as well. And uh, just thank the Lord for y'all. We're just going to close with that. Love y'all. God bless y'all. I'm here for you if you need. So appreciate y'all. Thank y'all.